But it is clear also from uh, animal experimentation that uh, some inflammation is good for you if you want to regenerate the tissue. So we are probably exposed to all sorts of inflammation during our lifetime in our brain. The problem is that in MS the inflammation is chronic. So you have inflammation all the time and that doesn't allow the repair process to carry on and get there. Okay, so that is why that is why perhaps all these immunosuppressive therapies work in part and because they, they will make look like for the body like what you are having is an acute inflammation and the chronic inflammation can stop. If you can't do that then maybe regeneration will occur but trials will need years and years and we need biomarkers, you have seen slides, uh, posters out there. It's very important to understand at which stage of the disease each patient is in order to know exactly what to do as to uh, therapy uh, means. And indeed, that issue of, uh, of uh, why acute uh, inflammation is good for you is because some of the cells that uh, take part in that inflammatory process, like the microglia and the monocytes and the astrocytes, secrete factors that allow the oligodendrocyte to go back to the neuron that has lost its myelin and start myelinating it again. But this is a temporary process. Now, <coughs> making an oligodendrocyte from a stem cell is a very complicated process and this is not our work. Uh, we, we are geneticists uh, of, uh, of applied genetics and we design molecules, this is the work of somebody else. And uh, here what it shows is that indeed you can start from a, 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 a precursor a, a, a stem cell that then becomes an oligodendrocyte, a precursor cell that then becomes a pre-oligodendrocyte and then an immature oligodendrocyte and then a mature oligodendrocyte with all these extensions that uncover a, a, the axon. And as all these things happen, certain genes that are markers go up and some others go down and, and, and the process is very complicated that you can see the change in the cell <coughs> shape and the different markers that you can see at every stage is different. Now, we can do that in tissue culture, but once we inject a, a cell into a, an individual, we have no way of making sure that we know what is happening. You inject it and it's in automatic gear. So that is why uh, uh, we have been looking at these things and I will give you some of the, uh, our approaches to deal with these matters. Now, <clears throat> this is a paper that was published last year uh, and, and I think that Gavin will give his, uh, sorry, you are not allowed to sleep. Uh, you. You will need your feedback on this paper uh, uh, regarding the issue of uh, the autologous non-myeloablative hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, which means using the bone marrow of the patient to treat. So at the beginning, they treat the patients with something that is very toxic to kill and make space for his, his own stem cells. Okay, and then they put them back, and what they see is that the relapse rate diminishes, and they claim though, that there is some sort of a neuroprotective effect as well and also in, 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 but when I looked at the paper and I am not a clinician at all, I noted that the average EDSS score for the 21 patients that were treated, and this is a non-random trial, uh, so uh, everybody knew what they were getting and how, it was, it seems to me very low. I think the EDSS goes from zero to 10, so 3.2 is not very high. So which means that the, perhaps the disease was not uh, uh, very uh, severe, it seems to me. But uh, uh, these things are happening. So uh, uh, some of, of these trials are going on. This is a trial that was run in Northwestern University in the US. 